Hey everyone, in this lesson, I'm going to show you how easy it is to convert your images to black and white using On One Photo Raw, and also how you can have complete control over those black and white conversions. Let's jump in and take a look. Inside of On One Photo Raw, it's incredibly easy to convert your image to black and white. And there's a few different ways that you can do it. The fastest, easiest way is to simply head into your Develop tab, head into your Tone and Color pane, and we're gonna scroll down into this color section, and we'll just pull back on the saturation all of the way. And there you go, you have a black and white image now. But my guess is, you probably want more control over that black and white conversion. So what I would recommend doing is going into your Effects tab, adding a filter, and using this dedicated black and white filter. This is going to give you complete control over how your image is converted to black and white. Now, if you wanna just jump in and add a quick black and white style into your image, just open up this more menu here and scroll through these different preset styles for the black and white filter. There's some really good ones in here and it may give you an idea of how you want to edit the image and convert it to black and white. But you can always go in and adjust things manually as well. So what I like to do is I'll head into this conversion section and I typically use this color response method. What color response allows me to do is it allows me to adjust the brightness of specific colors within my image. So for example, with this photograph, we have a lot of reds and we have a blue color within the background. So what we're gonna do is we can head into this conversion section and let's say we want to brighten the reds within the scene. We'll just grab that red slider and we'll pull up to brighten up those red colors within the photo. Now in the background, there were a whole lot of blues within the sky. So we'll grab the blue slider and let's darken those to create a bit of separation between the background and the foreground. And so you can see by adjusting these sliders, we can fine tune the brightness of those specific colors within our scene. Now another great feature within black and white is that you can actually adjust the tonality of the image as well. So for example, if you want to create a more contrasted black and white conversion, you can pull up on the contrast slider here to give the image a bit more pop and make things a little bit more contrasted. I typically like a little bit more contrast and I also like to darken things a bit when it's converting to black and white. So I'll just pull back on the brightness. I have quite a bit of contrast and then I'm gonna add in a little bit of white here just to make the photo come alive. And so if I turn this off and on, we really have a nice classic black and white look here and we've done it just by modifying a few sliders within this black and white filter. Now, another couple great features inside of the black and white filters, if you scroll down below this tone section here, we actually have this toner section and we have film grain. Toner is a way that you can incorporate a bit of color casting over your black and white conversion. What I would recommend is just opening up this type menu and then you can scroll through here and see which toner works for the image that you're modifying. You can also go in and adjust the highlight and shadow colors independently of one another by just clicking on the rectangle and you can choose your own specific color. Now we also have film grain down here if you want to incorporate a bit of graininess into your scene. So I'll choose film. Now remember the higher the number, the more grain it's going to have. So I'll just choose that Delta 3200, we'll just add a bit more in the amount and you can see we're giving it quite a bit of grain there to make it feel a little bit more antique and almost a little bit more authentic as well. So within this one black and white filter here, we've done a whole lot to convert that image to black and white and create our own custom monochromatic vision. Another fast way to convert your image to black and white is to go into the effects tab, add a filter, and we'll add the LUTs filter. In this LUTs section, 
we're going to go into our category menu. We can choose black and white. And there's all of these LUTs that are built right into Photo Raw that you can choose from to convert that image to black and white. There's also a ton of LUTs that you can download from our website and our creative library. And a lot of them are black and whites. You can quickly import them and then use them in your images as well. Now, before we head into the next section of this black and white lesson, I wanted to showcase a way that you can add in a bit of directional light into your scene using local adjustments. So I'm going to go into my local adjustments section here. I'm going to add an adjustment and I'm going to keep my exposure at negative one. And I'm going to go in to my masking tools here. And we're going to grab this little tool here. It's our masking bug or your gradient mask tool. You can also grab it by just hitting M on your keyboard. Now with that selected, I'm going to go into my shape and I'm going to choose reflected gradient. That way, this local adjustment is reflected on both sides of my mask. So I can drop this down. I can use this smaller handle to rotate and I can create a bit of directional light in my scene. That way it makes it a little bit more interesting in the center area for the viewer and we also eliminate some of the distractions that are at the corners and the bottom left and right areas of our scene. Now I typically like to feather this out quite a bit there to ensure it blends in with the rest of the area, but feel free to play around with that feathering for whatever image that you're modifying. So I'll just pull back on the exposure a little bit more for this to make it more dramatic maybe add in some contrast. And I typically like to add in a little bit of whites as well, just to make sure things aren't super dull and flat. And already, we're just giving the image a little bit of directional light to make things a bit more interesting within the scene. Another thing I like to do is I'll click on the masking options that I just created, or click on the masking options for the local adjustment I just created. We're gonna copy the mask that we just created here We'll add in another adjustment. This time I'm gonna boost the midtones a little bit, maybe the contrast. And I'm actually gonna paste that mask and then invert it. That way the light is coming into that middle section now. So if I turn this off and on, we're essentially just bringing in a little bit more light into that middle section. And it gives it that, again, directional light feel to make things a bit more interesting within our image. So we have the original and then after with a quick black and white conversion and a bit of directional light added inside of our local adjustments. So the last thing I wanted to show is how you can actually target specific subjects or objects within your image. You can protect them from black and white and have the color of that subject stand out within the scene. So for example, with this photograph here, let's say we want to convert this entire image to black and white, but we want to protect this red color within the car. So we're going to go to the effects tab. We'll add a filter. We'll add black and white. You can see it's converting the entire image there to black and white. So let's go into our masking options here by clicking on this little icon. And we'll go into this mask AI region menu and we're gonna choose transport. So we'll click there. You can see it's identified the car. Now we're gonna make sure we have erase enabled there. That way we remove the black and white filter from the car. So let's go in and we'll choose apply there. You can see it's removed that black and white from our car. Now we have a couple of extra steps here. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go in to the car itself and we're gonna paint in black and white into the windows and also over the rims and the tires here. So I'm gonna grab my masking brush. I can do that by just hitting B on my keyboard. You can also grab it by heading over to your masking tools and it lives up top in this section. Now I'm gonna use a relatively Small brush size around 15. I'm going to ensure that my feathering is at 100. My opacity is at 100. And I'm going to use paint. Remember, we want to paint in black and white into these window sections and also over the tires and rims. So I'm just going to click 
and brush around in these windows. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but as close as you can for that particular section that you're modifying. I'll do the same thing to this window here and this window as well. And then we'll do same thing to the tires and the rims. So now the black and white is only being applied to the areas surrounding this red colored car. Now in black and white, I'm going to go down here in my tone section. I'm just going to darken things up a little bit. And that's going to create quite a bit of separation between the color and the black and white. I'll add in some contrast, maybe a little bit of detail and a little bit of white. And now that we've converted the image to black and white and we've protected that colored section of our scene, what we're going to do is we're going to add one last filter here. I'm going to use the color enhancer filter, or you can also use color adjustment. But I typically like to use color enhancer because I have this color section where I can modify saturation and vibrance. But what I like to do is I like to head into this color range section and I'll grab this red color and we can modify the saturation the hue if we need to. And I also like to adjust the brightness. So if I wanted a little bit darker or a little bit brighter, I can adjust that down here. I'm gonna make it a little bit darker to make it a little bit more rich. And so we have before and after creatively protecting that specific object or subject within our scene to make the colors stand out. So that's how easy it is to convert your images to black and white instead of on one photo raw. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the lesson, subscribe to our channel for more tips and tricks for using on one in your editing.